Combate Global MMA on Friday, May 7th on Univision and TUDN USA. Late night, midnight. Gives you good reason to stay up late as flyweight standout Juan Leadfeather Puerta makes his Combate Global debut against Lloyd McKinney in an action packed card from Miami. Thank you so much, Juan. Right off the bat, how did you get the name, the moniker, Lead Feather? Lead Feather. So, um, thanks for having me, Jim. I appreciate it. I look forward to putting on a show for y'all next next week. But uh, I got my name uh, from a bunch of Brazilians. I basically am light like a feather, but when I get on top of you, I'm lead. So, um, that's where I got my name. Uh, I plan on getting on top of the Lord and, and substitute him until he can, uh, can escape. Yes, that's what we like to hear. Do you like the Do you like the nickname? Did you have any other nicknames? Man, uh, that's about it. Left feather's been in it uh, since the get go. This fight on Friday, May seventh, in Miami. What does it mean to you? What does this fight mean? The debut Combate Global for you? Man, it, it means it means the world to me. Uh, I've been uh, waiting to uh, debut for Combate since before the week before COVID hit um, last year hit the world. So. Um, my fight got canceled, and I've been waiting a year and a half to, to make my debut for Combate, and it's just, uh, uh, it means the world to me. You know, I want to put on a good show, put on a good show for all my fans and everyone on Univision and, and, and TUDN. It's interesting to me in this sport, in this combat discipline, mixed martial arts, any sport like that per se, that it's not only about the wins, but it's also about putting on a good show. When you're training, how much of that goes into it? I mean, if you go out there and just dominate for 10 seconds and win, good for you, not as much a good show. What is that like dealing with that? Or that doesn't really enter your mind. Um, it's, it's an amazing feeling to go out there and, and, and for all the hard work that you put in um, and, and all those hours, those thousands of hours you put in uh, in fight camp, uh, it means the world to go out there and get a quick finish. But, but uh, this sport is like chess it's uh it's very it's, uh, it's literally centimeters and milliseconds of mistakes can, can cost you a fight so you really have to go out there and, and make sure you make the right moves and capitalize on all all the mistakes they make what was it like for you when combate global came calling for you um it, it was a it was a great feeling you know i, I was i was a, currently on a seven fight win streak and, uh, man, I knew I needed a, a, a bigger stage to, to display my, my skills and my talent. And, and I was able to, they, they, the COVID shut them down, but um, so I was able to get three fights with my home promotion. That was one of the only promotions putting on fights during the pandemic. But um, now I'm on a 10-fight win streak, and it, and it means the world to, to go out there on a 10-fight win streak on such a big stage. And, uh, and man, like, like I said, it, I, I, I'm looking for a dominant performance. I'm looking for a quick finish. Um, but uh, if, I, if I need to, to really uh, play the chess game and, and dominate him for 15 minutes, that's the game plan, too. Juan, do you think we've come at a point in this discipline, in this sport, where fans appreciate all types of wins? Yeah, yes, sir. I mean... Uh, all types. Of, I mean, you have to realize uh, everything we go through. You know, wins a win, but um, obviously fans want to see a finish. Fans want to see a knockout. Fans want to see a submission or a TKO where the refs pulling you off. It's a, uh, it's a, it's an amazing feeling, and it really gives the fans what they want to see, and uh, that's really important. Juan, you've been living in Miami. How long have you been in Miami? What has it been like here in South Florida for you? I've been in Miami for now five years, and uh, and living in Miami has been been a blessing. I've, I have almost all the the best fighters in the world right here. It's the mecca of uh, of MMA, and uh, besides Vegas, and and uh, I'm, I'm blessed to have everyone I, I have around me at Coconut Creek. It's, a, it's a, my team, American Top Team, and um, uh, I, I love representing where I'm from now. I'm so glad you mentioned American Top Team, South Florida, Coconut Creek, because I was going to get into that, because initially, if I read it correctly, you were training at American Top Team in Georgia? Exactly. I was originally, I'm originally from Rome Carnero's school. I'm a black belt under Rome Carnero, and uh, it, we, I started in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, to really pursue my career, I made the move down 
to Coconut Creek and, and started training at American Top Team. And I really have a dog fight every single round. I'm training with the best in the world, world champs. And, uh, and uh, they really push me every, every single day, every single round, every single minute. So it's exactly what I've needed. And, uh, and it shows with my, my win streak. Uh, I've been able to pile up 10 wins in a row. And I, and I really give a lot of that credit to my, my Miami fighters, my Miami teammates, my Coconut Creek teammates, everyone. Everyone around here in, in South Florida has really helped me. Um, uh, live out this dream. Yeah, you have been on a roll. 10 fight win streak coming into this big matchup Friday, May 7th, Combate Global. You catch it on Univision, TUDN. Also, local time, Mexico. It'll also be in there as well on Televisa Nueve. The following day, Saturday, May 8th, Combate Global is global. You mentioned American Top Team. You also mentioned just South Florida in general. It is a training hotbed down here, not just with ATT, but a couple other good groups as well. When do you think, or when did you start realizing that, whoa, South Florida is like this mecca for training? Actually, I've realized that uh, South Florida is the mecca of training since uh, I started training. You know, um, uh, the, the best fighters really have come out of here. They, uh, certain gyms have now uh, uh, piled up into one gym. Black, there used to be a gym called Black Zillions. They kind of went into a uh, combat club and Stanford MMA, and a lot of those teams, uh, teammates also came to American Top Team. But there's also great teams down in uh, Miami that, uh, that really make us level up and really um, show us that uh, what we need to get better and we need to keep proving that, that we have one of the best teams in the world. So um, it's just uh, very competitive down here in South Florida. And, uh, and we always have to keep leveling and, uh, and, and making sure we're peaking and, and making sure we're, 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 we're doing everything we can to, to stay ahead. Juan, are you living then up near Coconut Creek or are you making a commute from Miami? No, no, so I'm actually uh, I'm living in Boca, bought a house in Boca, and, uh, and I really just uh, wanted to make this my, my home, you know? It's a, it's a, it's a, I'm a, not living, this isn't a hobby, this is a lifestyle for me, so... I just figured that I needed to make sure that, that all, everything was, was stable. Everything around me is, is, is helping me get better and accomplish these goals. But I'm living in uh, Boca, and uh, I'll make commutes every once in a while just to different cities to, to get extra training or, or to get better, but, but it's, uh, it's been amazing. What's it been like for a Georgia kid moving down to South Florida, living in Boca Raton? <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about food because I know you're in training, but have you found some good spots down here? <laughs> oh, man, uh, that's one thing I love about South Florida. I guess because of the tur tourism, there's always uh, great restaurants, great food. Um, I found uh, great uh, Colombian spots, great Brazilian spots. Um, I, I, I honestly, I work at Chima, and uh, it's, it's a five-star restaurant. It's a Rodicio, and bringing 15 different styles of meat, and, and uh, they've been helping support my career too they give me the time i need off and they give me the times i need to, to go uh take on these huge fights so um uh but no the food here has been amazing and uh it's hard to it's hard to not just make a quick stop and, and eat that good food but uh we got to stay healthy we got to make sure we know what we put in our body and um and now getting so close to that that weigh-in day uh I'm very very uh I, i'm always watching what i put in my body now you're very conscious about it. It's such a big deal. It is such a, obviously important when you guys are getting ready to fight and your fights are coming up, and this is a big one. It's interesting because you mentioned working, and I just was thinking of this listening to your answer. What is it like, too, for a fighter? Because when you're trying to reach that level where, obviously, I know, I understand, this is your full-time job right now, but you have to have another job to support yourself. So what's it been like just trying to find something else to do where it does allow you to have time to go fight. Exactly. 
exactly. No, well, honestly, um, if you see most fighters, they they um, they don't they don't have other jobs and stuff like that. And that's something that that people actually I feel like look up to me as. I have a full time job, and I have a and a, and a responsibility and discipline to mix uh, my full time fighting career with my full time job. So um, it's been very hard, but. Um, it's something I, I do and I work very hard for and that's why these fights mean so much to me. It's, um, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of hard work and uh, when, once you get that hand raised, it, it's all so worth it. So have any of the ATT fighters, coaches, or staff asked you for, get them a free meal over at Chima? <laughs> yeah, they all, they all want the, the hookup over at Chima um, and, I, and I, I try to help them out as much as I can. Um, but yeah, yeah it's, it's uh you know all those Brazilians, they love their Chudas and their Pichanya, so they're always asking me for some for some discounts and stuff like that. But um, they help me out a lot, so I'm always willing to help them out too. Yeah, it's Every a great... Time I come, come it, see us, Jim, I, I got, I'll take care of you too. Oh, that's so nice of you. It's a win-win for everybody. I love this. I love this. <laughs> Go Lead Feather. Yes, I'm joining the team. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, let's, let's talk a little bit about ATT, and you mentioned it already. But geez, now C1, I don't know if you had been there when it was in the warehouse, and now it's in this huge big facility on State Road 7441. I don't, were you there at the warehouse, or when you got there, it was already at this huge facility? So, so when I moved down here, we were at the big facility, but I've actually done a few camps where I've been to the warehouse, and, uh, and it's, it was a great gym back in, back in the day, and it's a great gym now. Uh, like I said, it's the mecca of all, of all the, the best fighters in the world. So, um, great, two great facilities. Obviously, now we have a really top of the line facility, and it's, it, we're able to do that because of all the great fighters we have. All the great with their great careers, they've been able to help um, build such a such a great uh, you know mecca right here in uh, Coconut Creek. Is it comparable at all to what it was like up in Georgia? I don't know. So I mean, uh, the Georgia facility is still in a warehouse, but um, just the the only difference is is uh is obviously the the the, the full time fighters we have. Right here we have full time fighters. There it's more of hobbies. Uh, people like to just hobby jiu jitsu, hobby MMA, stuff like that, self defense. Here is uh, everyone's trying to be number one in the world. So um, that's the big difference right now. I, you go in that facility, open those doors, and the first thing you see is that big, wide open area to train with the big ATT logo and then all the big banners and posters, life size of all the great fighters. It's, it can be a little overwhelming at first. Did you get used to all that right away? Absolutely. Once you walk in that place, you have the, you feel, you feel all the, just the, everything I mean, you want. You know, you see, you walk in there, you see the two cases on the left and the right with all the world title belts from UFC, Bellator, One FC, and uh, even from my my past promotion, Titan FC. I was world champion for Titan FC, and we have some uh, world titles in there for, from that. So um, it's a it's an environment that you you go in there and you really feel the vibes, and uh, you see Amanda Nunes, George Masvidal, you see. Um, Junior Dos Santos legends right now that have been uh, really building a name for themselves and it really just motivates you, motivates anyone that, that, that walks in that building. Now you checked out those glass cases with those title belts. Pretty cool, right? Absolutely. It's a big motivation for everyone. Uh, you go in there, you see that. That's what, that's what everyone's ultimate goal is. And, uh, and it really just uh, puts people in good spirits and uh, makes them work hard. Now this fight coming up Friday, May seventh, Combate Global MMA, your debut. Who's been training you for this fight? Who have you been sparring with to get ready? So uh, I've had uh, I've had the, the best fighters helping me. Uh, Alexander Pantoja, number two in the UFC right now in the world. I have Tony Gravely. Um, he's a uh, he's top fifteen in uh, one thirty five, and it's been help he's been very helpful. Good wrestler. My upcoming. You know, he's a wrestler, so he's going to be trying to take me down. So it's been great to have a, a D1 uh, Virginia Tech wrestler getting in on my legs, trying to finish those takedowns. So I'm very well prepared. I have Jamie Alvarez, and uh, I had uh, my friend Eric Shelton move down for his fight camp. He fights May 8th, and, um, and it's been great having him stay with me and, and really help push each other every single day. Um, I can't 
can't thank my partners enough, uh, Alexander Pantoja, Tony Gravely, Jamie Alvarez, um, and, and Eric Schultz. They've been uh, pushing, uh, pushing me a lot. I don't know how many you can have. Will they all be in your corner, or are there others that will be in your corner for this big fight? So, so we only have one corner, and uh, I have my friend uh, that, will, uh, that will be there with me. Um, he's going to be there all week with me, and uh, he has a very good mind of, uh, of them in May game. And, uh, and uh, really, you're in there by yourself, so um, all you really need is, is to tell you if, if you're winning the round, um, uh, the mistakes, and, uh, and let you know time, so time management. So... Um, I have 28 professional fights, and um, uh, I have a pretty good eye of what needs to be done uh, on Friday night. So um, I, I, I don't have any of my training partners there. One of my training partners that I mentioned, Jamie Alvarez, actually fights on the same night. So uh, it would be great to have him in there in the, in the same uh, corner room uh, warming up, and, and uh, hopefully we come out successful, successful together, you know. We win together as a team. We, we go in there individually, but we help each other as a team here uh, here during training. It'll be a double win night for both you guys at Chima's. Exactly, exactly. So, so we have uh, two ATP fighters fighting that night, and uh, and we're really uh, looking to not be denied on on next Friday, May seventh. So um, we're going to be giving up there, give our hearts, and um, and. Uh, Well, Juan, I want to also address Titan FC because they've been running shows and you're a big part of that and you've done very well with them. You're a champion from Titan FC, Lex McMahon and that whole group. What has Titan FC meant to you? What do you think about the talent with Titan FC? Um, it's, a, it's a great great platform uh, on UFC Fight Pass and, um, and uh, they've been an international company now. Uh, I won the world title in Kazakhstan in front of 15,000 people. And that was one of the best experiences I've had in my life, and um, and uh, they've really been supporting me. They, they've supported me through the bad times and the good times, and um, you know uh, they've really helped help build my career and uh, to really be in the place I am now. And um, I'm only happy to the, the, the position they put me in to, to be able to sign with Combate, and uh, and you know what that's that's the last chapter. I turned that page, and now my new page is beginning with Combate. So. Um, everything I get for them has is, is been wonderful, and I appreciated Titan FC support. But hey, man, we got to move forward, and now the only thing that matters is what I do, what I do for Combate now. Um, There's the new page, and, uh, and we'll see what the future brings for me here. A few more questions. We'll wrap it up, and thank you so much, Juan. Curious how you got involved in MMA. Were you involved in other sports growing up in Georgia? Um, so, I mean, I, I grew up playing soccer, and then I, um, I, I kind of uh, got away from that. But um, I, I've always been very – I wrestled in high school, and uh, and uh, that really, I think, uh, set me up for, for my MMA career. I, I really had a, a head start on a lot of these people with the ground and, and the takedown and, and knowing where to control the fight. So um, wrestling really uh, helped me out. I was a state champion and national champion in wrestling, and um, – and uh, now I, I, it was really helped me earn my black belt. You know, I already had that head start. I basically went in to jujitsu as like a basic blue belt, and um, was able to build that. It took me ten to tw or it took me almost twelve years to get my black belt, but but we're here now, and and uh, that's my game. Hey, state champion and national. What high school did you attend? I uh, attended Parkview High School in Atlanta, Georgia, in Lilburn, Georgia, to be correct, and. Um, and uh, we had one of the best teams in 2004 and one of the best teams in 2006 in the country. We had six state champions, uh, our, our, our six finalists in, the, in 2006, and we ended up winning five of them. So um, uh, it's, it's been a, it's really uh, helped mold me as a, as a fighter. And uh, wrestling builds this type of uh, grinding and, and discipline that, that I feel like no other sport can really build. And uh, it's really engraved the, the grinding lifestyle, the hard working lifestyle, the discipline, the responsibility, the accountability. Number one, um, you're always accountable for, for for your wins and your losses. Uh, the work you put in will will um, will, will show. And uh, if you're not putting in that work, uh, you're not going to get these wins against these guys. So um, I hold myself very accountable, and uh, it's it's really uh, built me as a as a man that I am today, and a fighter as I am today. Did you have aspirations of college wrestling? Yeah, yeah, I had a, I, I wrestled a year in college, but um, 
uh, I immediately got into MMA after my first year wrestling in, in college, and uh, I wrestled at Garden uh, Garden College. It was a junior college uh, wrestling team, and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, I just really, um, you know, Parkview was such a close team um, that I just missed the family atmosphere in college. And, uh, and, you know, I decided just to uh, immediately transition into MMA and start trying to hopefully make some money, and that's what happened. And following up with that, when you're in the grind in high school and doing as well as you've done, which I'm learning, was there a thought, hey, maybe Olympics, am I good enough, can I do that? Was that ever a thought? Um, that, that was always a thought, but um, uh, like Olympics uh, is, is a very, uh, you know, that's the, high, the highest level of, of, of it all, you know, and uh, I thought I was uh, good enough for sure, but um, I, I figured my wrestling career was pretty much over after after my freshman year in college, and, uh, and uh, I really just wanted to really focus on MMA and being a world champion there, and I was able to accomplish that with Titan FC, but I did fight an Olympic, uh, Olympic um, so an Olympian. His name was Gustavo Ballard. He was undefeated at the time, um, seven and zero, uh, and and uh, I was able to knock him out in the third round uh, for my third fight with Titan FC, and that was, that was huge for me. Oh, that's always so good when you could do that. <laughs> it's so interesting because Parkview High School. I'm curious, is one of the goals now to be one of the most famous alums from Parkview High School? Go Panthers! Absolutely. That's it right there, man. You already know it. Parkview Panthers. Um, I've, I've been uh, representing them and leaving, leaving their name high up there. And, and I want to be their, their first um, uh, UFC, UFC star from, from that area. So um, uh, eventually. Uh, but first, uh, we gotta, we got to make sure we, we take care of every, all the business in front of us with Combate. But um, uh, I plan on being their first MMA world champion. And I plan on being a world champion for Combate. And... Uh, and keep it rolling, keep the ball rolling, man. Well, that's awesome. And also, I read about, and we could wrap it up with this, I read also, your heritage is Colombian? Yeah, I'm Colombian. I'm Colombia's first world champion. And, uh, and yeah, I, I'm proud of my, my culture, proud of uh, my roots. And um, I, I plan on leaving their name out really high, too. So um, I, I represent all, all that, and uh, I'm really proud of it. Of the well, you said something. First world champion from Colombia? That's correct. First male world champion from Colombia, yes, sir. Well, it's interesting because then I was going to ask you, have you ever been to Colombia? Do you have family in Colombia? And also, I, do they have MMA in Colombia? They have MMA in Colombia. I actually fought for their SFC show. They used to have a show called SFC. And um, I did very good. I went undefeated in Colombia with three fights. And... Um, uh, the the sport is growing big time there. I go there a lot, and I do seminars in Barranquilla, Cali, Medellin, and uh, I have great turnout. I have almost 40, 45 people show up every seminar, and uh, and I love giving back to the country. You know, the, the, they're 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 not as uh, privileged as we are here, and and anything I can give back to the community is, is always a, a great thing. Yeah, it really is something that you're able to do that, and I'm glad to hear you're doing that because it is important. We see a lot of political strife, and we won't get into all the politics, that's not this, what this is for, but seeing in some of the different countries, and then seeing some of the fighters giving back and doing things like that. You have family over there, and family just all over, Florida, Georgia, that'll root you on, keep up, check up on you? Exactly. Uh, this is a big fight for me, because I know a uh, big following, and then Colombia is going to be watching Univision. They'll finally understand the Spanish broadcast. They'll finally be able to watch me from their homes, from their TV, from their, from just from their living room. So it's been hard for them to watch me on, on the UFC Fight Pass stage and all those other stages, but uh, finally they'll get the chance with Univision and, and with uh, TUDN and all of them. So uh, I, I really want to put on a good show for them. And uh, like I said, they usually leave Columbia up high. And, uh, you know, eventually I want to open up my gym in, in Columbia. So uh, this is a start for it. And um, so I'm kind of laying out all the cards so, and blueprints so, so I can do that. Oh, you're doing it right. One step at a time, brother. One step at a time. Thank you so much. Juan Ledfeather Puerta, Combate Global, May 7th, live on Univision, midnight, and TUDN USA. It's going to be an action-packed night, a big night for the flyweights. We're going to see a lot of good action. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to put on a show for you all. 
And uh, let's go for this finish, baby. Let's go. Hey, social media for you. Anything out there for fans? Yes, sir. Uh, if y'all want to follow me on, on Lead Feather MMA um, on all platforms, uh, Twitter. Um, I'll be keeping uh, y'all posted on weigh-ins and, and, and everything like that. So uh, tune in, guys. And, uh, and uh, like I said, all I want to do is a, a great performance for y'all and uh, show you everything I've been working hard for my whole life. Going for win consecutive number 11. Let's do it. Thank you, Juan. Thank you so much, Jim. Talk to y'all later.